Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. It's going to be more of an interactive analysis video because as you're aware, or maybe you aren't aware, that last night's video on the tremolos got blocked worldwide on copyrights, unfortunately. So rather than just give up on the tremolos, I really want to represent them on this channel somehow. I think it's really important to know about them as a band during the 60s, but also for the younger generation to check out this band and see the amount of talent they had. But I'm going to put the link to the original video that I watched last night in the description below, and I'm also going to pin it to the top of the comments so you can find it there as well. So. Go and watch the video. You can watch it all the way through if you want to. It's three minutes and eight seconds in length. And if you want to, you can watch it up until one minute and 36 because that's when I first jump in for my analysis and then I resume the video after that. Also, let me know what you guys think about this as a concept. In the rare situation that a video is blocked worldwide, I might still be able to represent them on the channel by doing a video like this. But I will see you guys in the comments section of this video. I'm just going to let the original video roll that I did now without the song elements and hopefully you guys enjoy it. So I'll catch you later. Rock! Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1967. We're going to be taking a look at the tremolos and they're going to be playing through Silence is Golden. So let's get the guys up on screen and see how they get on. I'm just going to jump in here. Loved that little bit of feedback, by the way, so you know that this is totally live. And the Tremolos, one of those bands that are included in the British Invasion, one of those bands that are mentioned alongside the Beatles, the Kinks as well, who have also got videos on. And just mentioning bands like that, especially the Kinks, it's amazing the variety of bands that were part of that invasion because here you've got a band who are playing and singing at the same time but the appeal that they must have had would have been in a totally different place in terms of maybe teenagers but also the parents as well would have been into this and it really highlights the difference in the sound between the kinks maybe seeing as a really early punk band in the 60s and just while I mentioned the Beatles it was New Year's Day 1962 that Decca Records were uh, listening to two bands, they had Brian Poole and the Tremolos and also another band called The Beatles and they chose to go for Brian Poole and the Tremolos and we all know that story, how the Beatles were turned down and then went to another record label but these were the guys that were chosen and it's interesting as well the band names because Buddy Holly and the Crickets was an inspiration to the Beatles. They followed that Crickets theme and called themselves the Beatles and these guys, or at least that first iteration of the band, Brian Paul and the Tremolos, was just following in the footsteps of Buddy Holly and the Crickets. They wanted to call themselves something similar. And another thing that you notice looking at all of these bands back in the 60s, but also throughout the decades, are how they got their start and continued to release covers of other bands material. This one, for example, was initially released by the Four Seasons and is a very similar version of this track. And this did really well for these guys, the Tremolos. And this is after Brian Poole left, but this got to number one in the UK and number 11 in the USA. So it was a big hit for them, again, just doing a cover. And when you look at the Beatles and other bands in the 60s, the amount of songs that they released that weren't originals, that were covers, it just goes to show that so many bands and so many artists have to release covers to get themselves on that stage or at least get their foot in the door. So then once they've got that exposure, they can then start to write their own stuff and release original material. And in reference to that fact, Brian Poole and the Tremolos released Twist and Shout, a cover of that after the Beatles did a cover of that track as well. So there were some songs that just got multiple releases from different artists at exactly the same time. And as this is after 1966, Brian Poole has left the band to pursue his solo career 
career. Unfortunately, that didn't go particularly well. He didn't chart. But interestingly, his two daughters did chart in the mid-90s. They were called Alicia's Attic. And I certainly remember that band name. But going back to the band, Alan Howard, the bassist, has already left as well. And in this video, you can see his replacement, who is Len Hawks. And Len is the father of Chesney Hawks, who had a hit with a track called The One and Only. And again, that's another track that I remember from my youth. And I think that was a one hit wonder. But you can certainly see the similarity between Len and his son Chesney. So you'll see that resemblance when we look at Len, who's playing bass in this video, and he also plays drums, but we've got Dave Munden on drums here. So getting into the analysis of this performance, the first thing to point out is the fact that we've got four vocalists on stage. They're all harmonizing with each other, and they're all playing an instrument. So there is a hell of a lot of difficulty in terms of keeping your vocals solid throughout and just concentrating on your own vocals. This is something that if you have ever sung in harmony with other performers or even just one other performer, it is so difficult to just keep your focus on what you're doing and not get put off by the other harmony lines or harmony line that might be going on. So once you've got one vocal and then you're harmonizing with that vocal, you really have to concentrate on your own vocal lines. When you've then got a third vocal and a fourth vocal, it becomes even more difficult because especially when you're holding notes even with one vocalist, sometimes holding a note can drift off sharp or flat. Whereas when you add into the mix another three vocalists behind that lead vocal, if any one of those starts drifting out, it's going to just be a mess. And that is what is so impressive about these guys and the fact that this is totally live are these held notes and everyone's staying so true to the pitch and true to the harmony in relation to each other. And another thing I need to mention about this performance, but something that is essential to the sound, is Rick Westwood's vocals, because he's taking care of that top end falsetto. All of those high notes you can hear is Rick, and doubly impressive when you factor in that he's picking out the chords as well. All of that picking you can hear is Rick singing and playing at the same time. But once you add in those high harmonies to the lower vocals that we've got going on that are all harmonizing with each other as well. It gives such depth to that vocal sound and really makes it unique. And even if this music isn't to your taste and it's not something that you would listen to, you can take a step back, listen to everything that's going on and accept how difficult this is to do live. Because a lot of people might say they're not into this, they don't like the sound and that's fine. But as soon as people start to criticize it, Give them a microphone and ask them to perform this with three of their mates and get it to sound this good, this accurate, and give them a guitar, give them a bass, give them a drum kit. Let's check out the second half of the performance. And there it is. What I love about the sound that Rick gets with his high head voice. It's not really falsetto because falsetto has that breathy quality to it. Whereas Rick just has such a clean tone, that high up in his register, and it just makes the sound. And there's little bits in there where you can hear the pitch ever so slightly off. It's not off hardly at all. But when it is just for maybe half a second or a second, it's great because you get an appreciation of the live sound and so many people nowadays and the younger generation are almost immune to hearing something live. They don't know what live sounds like anymore. So it's great to look back at these videos and get this human quality in the voice. It's something that I mention all the time. It's something you can connect with that vulnerability in the voice because it is truly live. And a quick shout out to Alan Blackley as well. The only one that I haven't mentioned so far because he's on rhythm guitar and part of that vocal harmony and just as important as the rest of the guys, absolutely solid vocally. And you can see he's supplying that rhythm with just downstrokes, which just keeps it driving along and goes along so well with what Rick's doing, picking out the chords. And throughout this performance, there are little parts of it that just stand out and sometimes you forget about all the things that are going on at the same time. Like when Dave 
is playing a drum fill and he's singing at the same time but singing in harmony with the other three guys and exactly the same when Rick's picking the guitar and you can hear the guitar picking going on but you almost don't attribute it to the players because they're so solid vocally and the amount of interaction in melody and harmony that's going on vocally there's so much to listen to that you forget that it's just four guys making this sound. And 1967 was the year that the Tremolos had a lot of chart success in the UK and the USA. This track got to number one in the UK and number 11 in the USA. They also released a Cat Stevens track called Here Comes My Baby and that got to number four in the UK and number 13 in the USA. So still did really well. And they also had a track called Even The Bad Times Are Good and that charted well as well, all in 1967. They continued to have success in 1968 as well, and three tracks that they released called Suddenly You Love Me, My Little Lady, and I'm Gonna Try were originally Italian songs, but they were translated into English and released in the UK. So they continued to have success in the late 60s and the early 70s in the UK. Not so much success in the USA during the 70s period, but definitely did make an impact in the late 60s. And the tremolos after Brian Poole left in 1966 went on to have nine UK top 20 hits. So they certainly made an impact here in the UK. But this video really does show how much variety there was around at the time in the mainstream for people to listen to. Sometimes nowadays you have the mainstream and then you have other bands that are more underground where you have to try and search them out to get a particular sound. Whereas you had so many different styles in the 60s and so much talent as well. This really does underline the importance of vocal ability and instrumental ability you just needed to have in the 60s in order to be successful and to make it into the mainstream in the first place. But thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!